Welcome to episode 24 of the Fairy Dust Crafts podcast. My name is Gina and I'm your host here. I come to you from my humble little craft room in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Uh, today is June 18th, uh, which means that it's been like three months since you've seen my face here and it's like it's crazy time flies um so I'm not gonna show you everything that I have made in the last three months because there's quite a few socks but we're just gonna jump right in and just pretend nothing's ever happened and I will show you what I've been working on in the last like let's say a couple weeks ish and um, I have a finished object here that I will show you that I literally finished like this weekend. If you have any questions at all, any comments, uh, just leave me a comment down below. I will put all the information on yarn, patterns, everything unless if I forget about it. Um, I will put all of that in the description down below. So you just uh, hit more, I believe a couple times at this point, and um, you'll get all of the information. I also am pretty good at keeping a Ravelry projects page. So if you're even just li a little bit curious about what I've been up to and what I have actually finished in the last couple weeks or last couple months, <laughs> Last couple months. Follow the link down below uh, where it says Ravelry Projects page and um, have a little gander, see uh, what's on there. Whenever I make socks, like if there's no pattern at all, then you will find all of my notes, my specs, everything in there. I um, sometimes do come up with my own little patterns. I have like knitting pattern books, pattern libraries, that kind of stuff. And every once in a while, I just go through those. Most of them are very old. I have magazines from like the 1960s. Um, so if, whenever I find something on there, I just put all of my notes, everything in my Ravelry projects page. So you can pop in there and just get all of your numbers from me. If you would like to um, knit a different size and you can't figure it out, feel free to mes message me and I will give you numbers for like any particular size too. I'm not like gatekeeping any of my projects here. So at the beginning of the year, I started a little project just for myself. It's called Net Zero Stash, uh, which means that during the year this year, I would like to either have more yarn leaving my stash than coming in, or at least just have it zero out. Um, what does that mean? If I, let's say, buy a skein of fingering weight yarn, then I do also want to use up a, a skein of fingering weight yarn. So we kind of like it all levels out. Um, obviously, ideally, I would like to use up more of my stash uh, this year. I don't have any like crazy illusions of like, I want to use up all of my stash. That's just not realistic and I feel like that would be too much like putting too much weight on my own back so I thought that would be a great idea so at the beginning of the year I wrote everything down I was really good at it uh I think you saw my stats for February for sure in March and then I kind of like things happened like life got really busy and I kind of like trickled off so I I am still keeping track, but also not. Uh, so I do not have any stats to share right now. I think I need to like just do a reset, forget the last like three months or four months if we include like June and then just go back at it in July. I have been really good using up every little scrap that I have. Um, so I've been using, I've been making socks with like just random leftovers. I got into this habit of, um, using up a full skein of yarn. So I will make my first pair of socks when I break into a new skein of yarn and then 
there's always enough for a second pair of socks. So what I do, and I think that's a great habit to keep if you don't want to um, have like a gigantic amount of like just random bits and pieces. Um, I make a full pair of socks first and then I put a small little square into my coziest memory blanket um that's just like a little thing for myself i want to keep it as a memory blanket to kind of like look back and see what kind of socks i've made so if i make a pair of socks i put i don't know i haven't actually like measured it i want to say it's probably somewhere around three and a half four grams of yarn that goes into one of those squares and um and then i weigh my yarn again after my blanket square and I make a second pair of socks. And usually it's not enough for a full pair of socks, even like if it's shorties. So I just go into my scraps and I pick out a coordinating color or even a contrasting color, even more fun. And I just use that for like heels and toes, depending on how much yarn I need. So my first finished object, I haven't even washed these yet, um, is a pair of socks where I did exactly that. So I have a full pair here. And this is sock number one. So all of this is the same yarn up until the toe. And same with the second. Um, I eventually ran out of yarn. I can't remember which one is which. This one is the one where I went and just pulled from uh, the outside for my, I had like two leftover skeins, two leftover little balls, if that makes sense. Um, they were not the same weight. One of them was like 18.4 grams. The other one was like 21.8, something like that. So, uh, my first sock, I started the first sock. This is the first sock that I started. I started this, um, with the 18 grammar and just knit until I literally like ran out of yarn. And then with the, I started the second sock. And I did the heel and everything in the same same yarn. I started my second sock and started once I got to the same length for both socks. I started pulling from the inside and the outside, and I would do around like with the outside yarn and then around with the inside yarn until I was out of yarn. So they are both the same length. And then I had, I think it's like four rounds where I had to, I found this like same yarn, same company yarn uh, in purple. That's it's not the exact same purple as in here, but it's very close, same yarn. Uh, so I just had, I think it was four or five rounds where I just had to do plain knitting before I got to the toe. So the toe is a little longer, but these are just a pair of my, I call them bed socks, uh, because these are super easy to just like toss off at the end of the day. This is something that I wear like literally from like the couch to the bed at the end of the day. Um, or if I just need something cozy. I, those are great socks to just like use up any little scrap of yarn because I don't care. Nobody's going to see these. This is a pair of socks that I will just wear at home and that's it. Um, They're very grateful to just use up any kind of scraps of yarn you have. So this is a true leftover um pair of socks. I'm on a mission here of like using up all of my little scraps before I break into a, a new skein of yarn. Now sometimes I do break into a new skein of yarn and uh, fun things happen. This here is my yarnable uh, for, is it July, June, May? It's May. It's my May Yarnable. I haven't received June yet. Oh no, I have received June. I don't mind all of my little stitch markers that I have in here, but this is May's Yarnable. Um, Yarnable is a yarn subscription by Hypnotic Yarns where you get a skein of yarn. There's like different options. You can get a skein of just sock yarn. There are DK options. Uh, I know there's an option for a 
full skein of sock yarn plus a coordinating mini. Um, I just got a regular 100 gram skein of sock yarn. I absolutely love this. I feel like the camera doesn't really do it justice. It's so beautiful. This is called Berry Citrus Bliss. Uh, and it's so summery. So I started a pair of just vanilla, vanilla socks. Uh, I am working on the foot right now. I'm losing stitch markers here. Um, working on the foot and it does this like stripey thing and I'm here for it. I love it. It's so cool. It definitely looks more apricot and less um, crazy neons in the actual sock, but I love these. Um, my mom has claimed these, so I will get on to finishing the full pair. Uh, this is the second, or no, this is the first sock. So I still have a ways to go. She has just a touch larger feet than I do. So I just need to make them a little longer, that's all, um, than it would for my own feet. And then I'll have leftovers to make a pair of very summery shorty socks for myself. Uh, I really enjoy the Yarnable subscription, but I believe I may actually cancel it at the end of the year. Um, just with having a reduced stash in mind. Um, I would love to get it down to not a minimum, but to something that's just a little easier to handle. I feel like it's a, just a touch too much right now. Um, and the easiest way to do that is not bringing in any more yarn, but then I really like getting mystery mail in the mail uh, once a month. So, the idea that I had was to just grab a bunch of random skeins of yarn and um, the yarnable yarn usually comes in this like small little bag, um, like fabric bag. So you can't really like when you open the whole thing, you can't really see what's in there. So I went ahead and I grabbed like a bunch of random yarn from my stash, some of it that I've had for quite a while and just put that in um, those bags, put it in a basket. And what I'm going to do in the new year is just every month grab one of those little bags and just knit whatever is in there to kind of like substitute that like happy feeling that I get from um getting yarn in the mail really I feel like it's the same thing and I have no idea what's in those bags like you can't really see what it is um I do have some of them I think a couple of them are like mini like full skein plus mini sets so like a sock set uh which is perfect so that's the idea for right now it's only june things may change i'll have enough of those baggies for at least a year uh so i can just keep adding to it and then i'll have like a bunch of different yarn and still a full pair of socks that i can make full pair of mystery socks that i can make every month so that was the goal uh, so you've seen one finished object and you've seen one sock that I'm working on right now. I haven't even talked about this. This is also a finished object. Um, this is my November cardigan by Petite Knit. And I made this with Barocco's Vintage. Uh, which is a worsted weight yarn. This is colorway Douglas fur and I love it. I started this, if you've been here before, you know I started this in August last year and it was supposed to be my sweater jacket kind of thing for last winter. So I did like a small little knit along um, and I called it November for November um, because I wanted to make a November sweater to be worn in November. That never happened. Uh, I did finish it sometime around Christmas or like just after Christmas. Um, and then it had just been sitting. I 
I have sewn on the last pocket. It has two pockets. So I'm just going to get up and show you guys. So it's got a couple pockets. And I really like... Can you see it? I really like the shoulder detail. It's so pretty. Um, so I sewed on my one pocket and then didn't do the second one. I don't know why. It literally took like all but not even 10 minutes to sew on those pockets um, and it never happened. And then I was done uh, maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And I was like, done, and never washed it. So like, I couldn't even wear it. And I think that's like a small little issue that I have. It's especially with making garments. I am very much a process knitter. Uh, so I enjoy my, I fully enjoy my project while I'm knitting it. And once I'm done, I'm done. I'm like moving on to the next project. Uh, I don't really care too much about my finished project um like obviously I do I love wearing my knits but it's just kind of like on to the next one and then sometimes I do not wash my projects for like weeks that just that just happens uh it's a little different with socks because socks just like depending on what they are uh I wash those by hand just like in the bathroom sink so it's like super quick and easy or um, any kind of commercial yarn, I just throw those in the wash. Like they just go in the washing machine and I hang them up to dry and that's it. So it had been, it's, it's been a, it's been a long process. I have lived in this cardigan and I love it. And I feel like I need a second one. This was so much fun. Definitely not for the beginner. It is an advanced um, pattern. So you gotta know a few little things. You gotta know how to brioche. Although Petite Knit has wonderful videos and everything, you still have to have just a little bit of knowledge um, in order to figure things out and just to follow along a little bit of a more difficult pattern. I would say if you're super adventurous, like go for it. Uh, but it takes a little longer. Brioche is a little bit of a process that just takes a little longer than just doing let's say like a stockinette uh, but it's like the result is absolutely beautiful it's so squishy and soft i am also working on this is really neat um this is the true nature tea by stephanie lotvin of telly bee knits and it is supposed to be a t-shirt but i have three skeins of this yarn so it's kind of like it's really, really blowing this out. It looks almost gray. So it is kind of like a dusty purple. There you go. You can see it a little better here. Uh, it's a dusty purple. It's called Dusk. Um, the yarn is by All Points North Yarn Co. However, um, this yarn doesn't officially exist. This is a cotton uh, merino blend. Um, but it's a fingering weight yarn. You can use their posh sock would be absolutely gorgeous for this. So I have three skeins of this yarn. It was, um, like test yarn to just see how it dyes and everything. So I have three of these or I had three of these. I have like this one plus whatever's left over here. Um, and because this is a very special blend, I don't really know what to do with like a random leftover, except for maybe like fingerless mittens, something like that. So I thought, because I know I'll have leftovers, but don't know how much, um, instead of making this a t-shirt the way it's supposed to be, it has, it's supposed to have like, um, kind of like half length sleeves. I'm just gonna turn this into a long sleeve shirt uh and use up as much yarn as I can and then if I still do have leftovers I can still make like a pair or two of fingerless mittens and just use it that way um I don't like throwing out yarn I do like using up as much as I can um but if it's something that I can't mix and match with anything else I may as well just toss it um if I have the tiniest little leftover 
but I thought this is fun um, and like a great little thing for the fall. I am alternating two skeins because it is hot hand dyed yarn. I always, always recommend that um, just so you don't have awkward pooling. And the way I'm alternating with this project is I'm doing helical knitting. Uh, highly recommend looking that up. If you've never done it, you can do like really cool micro stripes for socks. I've done that a bunch in the past and you don't get a jog. So, you know, when you do like, let's say a round in one color and then a round in the second color, um, you do get a jog where your beginning of round is. So with helical knitting, that doesn't happen. Uh, your beginning of round still stays in the same spot, but your yarn moves around. Your yarn, beginning of yarn moves around your project. If you have never done helical knitting and you would like to try that and um, knit a garment in hand dyed yarn, I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, it's so easy. It's so much fun too. It's kind of like all of a sudden you're like at the end of your yarn and you just pick up the second one, the second strand, and you just go round and round and round. And that has been my TV knitting for the last little bit. It is fingering weight, so it's a low going. Um, but it's my favorite type of yarn. I do really like a fingering or my favorite weight of yarn. I really enjoy fingering weight. Um, that's the yarn I choose. Speaking of, I found a project and I don't even know how I got to it, but I, I think it was like with, I have like, over here a uh, bunch of like just a random um half done socks and like ufos at this point and in a small little bag i found this this is uh, i got a cheat here this is the maya top by bella helms and this is a small little tank top so it is knit bottom up it has like all of these different panels and it is knit flat because it has a button band and you can wear it with the buttons either in the front or in the back. I think it looks really cute with the buttons in the back. Uh, and then it just has like a small little lace and cable detail um, in the center here. I love this. It's so pretty. And I totally forgot that I had this. I have no idea when I started this. I, have, I do not have a Ravelry project page for it. Um... I have no clue, like straight up. I am knitting this with a Santinus Garn tin line, uh, which is a light fingering weight yarn, and it is a blend. Uh, this is 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% 40, linen. So it's great for like a soft, uh, flowy summer shirt, summer top. I have last summer um, finished a summer like a flowy summer shirt um that I've definitely shown here before and with the same yarn and I had leftovers so I guess this is what I cast on no clue so what I've been doing is because it's a pattern where I really have to pay attention to is I'm just doing like roughly four to five rows a day and that's it like I don't really care when I get finished with it uh if I can even wear it this year or not doesn't matter uh I'm just kind of like slowly just chipping away at it and I'm enjoying that kind of process it's easier to avoid mistakes so the longer you sit down and really like work a let's say a uh, lace pattern or a cable pattern like the you, longer you're at it the easier it is to make mistakes and to make mistakes that you don't actually actually realize you made until like sometimes until you sit down the next day and you're like my pattern doesn't add up it doesn't match and then you gotta pull out and like do it all over again and figure out where you made your mistake. Uh, so I always recommend harder patterns, patterns that are just a little more like time and brain intensive. I say just like chop it up in small little 
bits and pieces uh don't give yourself a super strict timeline give yourself a little more time and if you are like making a gift or making it for a special occasion or something i say just do like small increments but then take breaks so sit down for 20 minutes work at it take a break like literally walk away from it come back to it and just like do it in smaller increments because that way you're avoiding mistakes so i've been doing this with um this pattern and so far i have not had a single mistake uh there is quite a bit of moss stitch happening and mistakes happen in moss stitch fairly often that is perfectly normal and those are easy to drop down usually they only happen within like your last couple rows or so so you just drop down fix them and ladder back up um easy peasy so that's kind of like what i've been working on i have um new project that i would like to approach which is called so cozy and i have a bag of yarn here that was gifted to me a while ago this was if you like have if you follow me on instagram or if you've like been here before you know that i work at my local yarn sh yarn store and this yarn was returned because it like bleeds color so this is drops fable uh drops fable print and this is color 677 and i have 19 of these so a customer bought one of these and brought it back it even like feels kind of funny touching it like it has kind of like almost a strange texture to it um and when we opened it like when when they opened up the bag like all yarn comes in bags of like 5 10 20 these come in bags of 20 drops usually just 20 and the plastic itself was like green which can mean two things and then the customer bought it and she said the yarn bleeds um I'm not sure if it actually bleeds or if it wasn't washed properly so what happened is one of two things it either the yarn or the color didn't set properly or it wasn't washed properly no matter what it literally like the color comes out of it so what i did when i first got this i tested it i grabbed one of these guys and just like made a teeny tiny little skein of yarn and washed it and like yes a little bit of um color came out of it but it was a perfectly acceptable amount of color coming out of the yarn like that just happens your first or second wash like leftover uh coloring leftover dye on your yarn can just come off that happens so what i did was like i was like oh well okay i'm just gonna start knitting and i started making i believe it was like a pair of gloves fingerless gloves something like that and i noticed that my hands were turning blue so obviously there is some sort of transfer happening so i have 19 of these and i was like i don't know what to do with it do i set like preset or reset reset to die again by uh, cooking it in citric acid um and then like set it that way and the way to do that is i would have to turn all of these balls into skeins 19 of them i'd have to turn them all into skeins and individually cook them on the stove with like citrus cit citric acid and water that would definitely get rid of the problem um and like it's a whole process so i was like i i don't want to do that i honestly just do not want to do that and started a project and i was like oh great now my hands are blue um so i'm gonna show you what i started 
and I literally just cast it on and I have a couple ideas here. So I started making So Cozy by Drops Design. Uh, it's a free pattern that you can get on uh, GarnStudio.com. Yes, <laughs> GarnStudio.com and it's a pair of leggings. Now, when I was a kid, we used to have hand knit leggings. Uh, that was a thing that my grandma made for like all of us in family. Everybody had these. Um, and I saw the pattern for these and I was like, this is perfect. I would love to make a pair of just like crazy leggings with uh, leftover yarns. So instead of like right now I'm making blankets and instead of doing the whole blanket thing, because you can only use so many blankets, I'm, I would just do a pair of scrappy leggings. But in order to do that, I would like to experiment with a pair that is just in the one color um, and see how it goes or like in the one yarn see how it goes. So the pattern uses Drops Fable, which this is um, perfect. And what I did is I went on Ravelry, had a look at the project pages and decided that I'm going to do a casing first. I'm going to make knit a casing for an elastic um, just to make sure that the that they fit and will fit even after like a couple washes. So I made a couple changes to the pattern and I will have those all in my projects page as usual. Uh, I'm also using a different needle size instead of a 2.5 millimeter needle. I'm going to use a 2.75 millimeter needle and knit a size small for myself because I'm kind of like a weird in between ish size where I can do either, but I don't want to do the next larger um, because I feel like that would be too big. So I started these and then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make this an experiment and I will knit these uh, live on Instagram and YouTube. I have never done a YouTube live, so that's gonna be a good experiment. Uh, I've done plenty of you uh, of Instagram lives. So I will just uh, pick away at this. Ideally, I have these done before it gets cold again, um, so I can wear it. Uh, where we live, it gets really cold. We got like really like crazy cold, for, cold snaps. Um, so something like this is perfect. So, as I said, my problem with the yarn is that it does like to transfer and I don't want to make a pair of pants that then will transfer all of their color, all of their dye all over everywhere I like move around and sit. So what I will do real quick um, before I continue with these is I'm just going to make a pair of shorty socks out of this and wear them, wash them a couple of times, see how it behaves, see if I actually have to set it um, because you can still set the dye uh, in a finished project. That does actually work. You do the exact same thing. You literally cook your item um, and do the exact same thing as you would do with just a skein of yarn because this is an awful lot of work. If I can just wash all of the remaining dye out and I have a feeling that that's what it is. Um, I'll just have to wash whatever dye is in there still, gotta wash it out, maybe do that a couple times um, to have everything come out just so it doesn't transfer. I'm okay if it um, bleeds every so often or every wash as long as it, if it's not an excessive amount and as long as if it doesn't transfer onto furniture. That's my number one concern. I don't want any dye transferring onto the furniture that I sit on. So at any rate, once I get going with this, you will be seeing me knitting this uh, live and we'll see how long it takes. So that's my little, um, little project that I want to work on every so often, maybe two times a week or so. Um, 
just to keep going and see how far I can get. It's literally just knitting in the round, knit two, purl two, forever and ever and ever, and that's no big deal. So a new little project that I thought I would, you know, put on myself. Uh, I thought that would be something fun to do and it is an item that I know I will wear even if I wear them as like at home pants uh, when it's cold out and I need something a little warmer. You don't have to wear your knit garments outside, right? Like they can all stay at home. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been working on. What about you guys? Have you guys been knitting lots? Um, are you planning on knitting during summertime? And if so, what? Um, let me know down below in the comments uh, if you liked what you saw here and you would like to see more, uh, give me a thumbs up. And as always, subscribe and make sure that you follow along my knitting adventures on Instagram as well. Uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Happy crafting. Bye.